Now I know we're still into the first couple weeks of this new year, but I can honestly say I've just finished watching the worst movie of the year thus far. But let's be honest, guys. Did you guys really think this was going to be good? Really? Come on. And with that, I'm welcome to another episode of The Romancer. My goal, as always, is to enhance the movie watching experience. So, Underwater, the newest sci-fi horror thriller-ish kind of movie starring Kirsten Stewart, who we saw a couple of months ago in Charlie's Angels, a movie which I really did not like. And I'll say it's off the top. This is not a good movie, but it's... It's better than that, for whatever that's worth. I know that's a low bar here. It's like me saying broccoli tastes better than liver. And yeah, that's true. So here, Kirsten Story plays this mechanical engineer. She's part of some uh, underwater drilling team. That's, they're about over six miles underwater, which is, which is a lot. And one day, there's some sort of earthquake or some kind of event that causes irreparable, irreparable damage to the facility that they're in. And now her and the, the remaining survivors have to find a way to get back to the surface. And of course, in the way are... These, um, I guess, new species or creatures that live on the water that are kind of terrorizing them. Now you hear, you know, on the water, creatures, aliens, whatever. And you, and you think about a lot of movies. I mean, this is this kind of premise has been done once, like maybe one or two thousand times in the past and, and done a lot better, but one to two thousand times in the past. I mean, this movie it really does brings nothing new to the table here. It's really by the numbers. Now, I, I'll say this. This is not this is not an unwatchable movie. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, to be, to be fair, it does some interesting visuals here. You know, the, the creature design is pretty cool. There are some decent scares here and there that make them way somewhat fun at times. Good action, some good tension. But the big, the biggest problem is that this movie doesn't really allow you to really give a shit about anybody on that, anybody on the screen. And this movie starts off kind of abruptly here, and it's interesting, interesting because it almost omits the very, the very first act. I mean, we get about 30 seconds of Kirsten Stewart brushing her teeth and then boom, here comes the earthquake and all, all the mayhem uh, ensues and here we go then trying to escape and there's no, no real setup here. We don't know exactly what's going on. The beginning credits, it kind of gives you ideas of these paper, paper, newspaper clippings or computer printouts or things that are going on, a few keywords in there. You kind of infer about what's going on more or less. But they don't really get into it, so they don't set up anything interesting behind this facility, why they're there, anything about the creatures, and they could have tied something with that to make this a little more interesting. But it does none of that, and even worse is that it doesn't really set up any of the characters. We meet them as we go along, and it's, and it's not the worst thing in the world. The movie can still slow down and give us some good character moments and good character development, but it does none of that. So we don't know who anybody is, except they just, they just happen to work there. And the, issue, the big issue with that is because, it's because of that you just don't care. You know, you, you know, you're not invested in anybody. And the best part about seeing a thriller or a horror movie is you caring about the characters because now you're invested in what happens to them. And that's what draws the horror out. Completely devoid of that, except for the typical jump scares you get in a lot of these movies, and particularly this one. Now, although there are some good visuals, like I mentioned before, at the same time, a lot of shitty visuals as well, because it's hard to tell what's going on at times. And I get it, the deep on the water, and you need to have that feel. And I understand that. But they could have done a little bit more in terms of kind of some of the lighting that they use on the water to give us a better sense of really what's going on. And there's a lot of cool perspectives from inside the suits that they're wearing. And, but, but at the same time, that kind of deprives you for really knowing what's really going on, getting a sense of scale, what's behind what, what are they actually looking at. And it's confusing at times, which is kind of a shame. And it happens on off in this film. And at the end of the day, it's just a movie I can't honestly recommend. Um, it, it has enough moments. Like I said, it's not a train wreck, so you can probably watch this at home, particularly if you're a horror fan, you like this kind of horror thriller kind of type of movies. You know, Netflix, Amazon, whatever, when it comes out, you know, when it's free. Uh, but I can't honestly tell you to what pay to actually go watch this movie. There's other things better to watch out there besides this. So, on the water, you guys want to check it out? Let me know. Comment below. Let me know what you guys thought. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, subscribe below and feed money to go to the movies and talk about it afterwards. See you guys next time.